So as this has now been ongoing for a little over 200 seconds, are you... <laughs> it took 200 seconds to generate this? All right, again. <laughs> so Apple has come out with a coding diffusion model that is based off of Quen 2.5 Coder. Now that is a sentence that I'm sure none of us really expected to hear ever, but it is actually true. And <laughs> what we're looking at right here is the Hugging Face page for this model. Now, truthfully, I likely wouldn't cover this generally because it is not very aesthetically pleasing to watch this happen as there is no pretty diffusion process that we can visualize like there was with the Lada diffusion model, which I have played with uh, like a few times and it is quite cool. But this is really novel and unique and have Having a coding specific diffusion model is quite interesting. In addition to that, they have also put out a research paper in conjunction with this that does seem to propose some novel kind of approaches to handling these sorts of models and things of that sort. Now I do actually have this running and I will say part of the reason that I wanted to make this video is because it seemed quite complicated to actually get this running in terms of a lack of clear instruction from Apple on how to actually play with this locally. Fortunately, thanks to some vibe coding with Gemini and also a comment in the local Llama post for the announcement of this model, um, basically someone put a script that helped me understand how to run this. I do actually have a small little Gradio web interface that I will show and put on GitHub as a gist if this video gets 400. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'll put it up. Um, with that, I am not going to pretend like I understand all of this research paper that came out with this, but they did actually, well, they did kind of sum it up in a somewhat palatable way, I suppose one could say. And basically, I did read this. I just kind of skipped through section two, which is all a bunch of like mathematical formula looking things. However, a lot of what I get from this paper is that they're basically talking about exploring and trying to understand how diffusion models differ in terms of... Uh, compared to autoregressive models, which are the traditional left to right token generation LLMs that we're used to seeing. And in this, some of the interesting things that they kind of talk about are one, and they talk about testing it with different data modalities. And by modalities, I don't mean like giving it pictures and things like that. But as they refer to them here, they're talking about basically data modality, e.g. code or math influences model behavior, and how ARness evolves across different training stages. And they talk about this ARness a lot in this paper. And basically, I do believe what is meant by that is just how much the model produces tokens in like a left to right fashion where it produces the token that comes first before the one that would come later in the sequence, something like that. Don't take this scientifically. But something they talk about here, and I don't quite remember where it specifically was in this, but they mentioned that with coding, they find that it is less auto regressive and more diffusion like. So, okay, good. We can see this right here where although math and code decoding exhibit different degrees of local ARness, a consistent finding is that code generation has a lower mean and higher variance in global ARness. And in plain English, this indicates that when generating code, the model tends to produce later tokens first, leaving some early masked tokens unrecovered until much later. The reason might be that mathematical text is essentially sequential and usually requires left to right computation, whereas code has an intrinsic structure. Consequently, okay, and then the model often plans token generation globally like a programmer jumping back and forth through code to refine a code implementation. So this snippet right here I just found kind of interesting and perhaps maybe nerdy, but when the sampling temperature is increased from the default of 0.2 to 1.2, which is a fairly significant increase, Diffu Coder becomes more flexible in its token generation order, freeing itself from strict left to right constraints, as figure 1a shows. Unlike autoregressive models, which primarily diversify token choices at higher temperatures, so basically like say you're running a local LLM and you bump the temperature up to something ridiculous, it might start outputting like really obscure and odd sentences that sound like they came from someone who was perhaps not quite right in the head, um, to put it simply and unscientifically. But unlike AR models, which primarily diversify token choices at higher temperatures, which I did just say, DLLMs or diffusion LLMs additionally diversify the position of the generated token, meaning that instead of just kind of sticking with the standard left to right, the higher temperature makes it more likely to generate tokens at random spaces in the entire generation. So like later tokens could be generated before previous tokens. 
with that, I think I'm just going to jump into actually playing with the model here and talking about that. First and foremost, in terms of actual system specifications here, I am using a 5090 laptop GPU, which has 24 gigs of VRAM. This model is loaded in right now. It is just this specific one, the CPGRPO right here, which we saw in the paper, as that seemingly was the best performing version of this. They did also have two other ones here. I do believe if I click on their Hugging Face model page. They had that one, the CPGRPO, which I think will perform the best. They have the general instruct version and then the base version. So I am running this version right here. Don't get confused and try to run the instruct version. Um, only a foolish person would do that. <laughs> so with this, let's just hop in right here. Now, something that is frustrating about this is unlike, I think it was Lada, you don't actually see the unmasking process happen. So basically, you don't see the tokens being generated in much later positions. It just kind of takes a while and then it will generate the entire result at once, which I suppose is a downside, but I don't have the capability to put a pretty um, interface on it that would show that. With that, it is loaded and currently using around 16 and a half gigabytes of video RAM. So let's just go ahead and ask it to generate a simple Python game. So as this has now been ongoing for a little over 200 seconds, are you, <laughs> it took 200 seconds to generate this? All right, again, <laughs> one, I cannot discount that I am incorrectly running this in some fashion, whether it be a sampling parameter or other implementation issue. And two, this is definitely more of a research oriented release. Now with that, I was going ahead and planning to peek at just the parameters I'm using right here. Basically the max new tokens is set to 1024 and then the steps, which is kind of the diffusion element of this non-scientific is set to 512, which I do believe I saw referenced in the research paper. So with that, here is the code to solve the problem. So we have a simple number guessing game, which is something a lot of smaller models, coding models seem to default to, at least uh, with a small sample size of my testing. <laughs> okay, well, unfortunately it didn't entirely work, but I will say that it failed after I started playing and not prior to the game starting. So I suppose that would be, okay, let me just see. Okay, yeah, here's what I'm gonna do. And this is probably something that is far outside the scope of what you would wanna do testing this model, but I am truthfully kind of curious. I'm going to vibe code with it. So I will ask it to fix the issue based off of the terminal error that was outputted. All right, so we'll just kind of go ahead and see what goes on here. The previous generation did take 203 seconds, so I will kind of assume this would be somewhat similar. <laughs> It did actually go ahead and fix the issue, which is, truthfully, I didn't think it would. Basically, this should not say number. It should say what this says right here to correspond to the actual thing that is the number. And it did just go ahead and actually fix these and make them all match. I did get bored while this was kind of doing it and just went ahead and fixed it. But I will go ahead and use the newly generated clean code from the diffusion model. Again, I know my naming schema is atrocious for files, so please just uh, don't hold that against me. <laughs> Five. And the problem is you have to rerun the script every time. All right. I'm like, this is when I get obsessive because each time it's going to be a different number. So it is in some ways a more complicated number guessing game than perhaps one where it would just give you hints and then you would go to completion. All right, final one, four. Yeah, I knew it, I knew it. <laughs> All right, I really should not be getting this excited over. It is three in the morning, so. All right, well, I have won the game. I will try a web test. I don't know how well it will do if I give it Steve's PC repair. That may kind of mess up the results, but we'll try it. And obviously it will take a little bit of time, edging up to about, 18 gigs of VRAM, so unfortunately this is something you're likely going to need a 24 gigabyte card to run. And after probably around 200 seconds, we got a refusal, which it is perhaps possible that me saying please was the catalyst here for this refusal. Um, probably not, but we're just gonna go with that. So we're going to just try it again. <laughs> oh wow. Well, <laughs> look at this, like, 
my first website. All right. I shouldn't be knocking it. That's kind of mean. Okay. It did, in addition to generating the code, it also just gave us like, hey, this is a simple example. It doesn't have any SEO stuff. You should add images, CSS to make the site more attractive. Here you mentioned the details, one, two, three, city street, replaced with the appropriate values in the code. Truthfully, I don't know that a lot of other models actually tell you to replace those. So I will give that a, a good score for, for doing that. All right, let's check out this website. Wow. That is a website. Again, I don't have a lot to say about that. Truthfully, I think I will go ahead and actually ask it to iterate and improve upon this since it did actually fix its code with the Python game. So maybe I will ask it to just go ahead and add CSS and some stylistic elements. I suppose while this is generating, I will just kind of go ahead and show an example of what is actually happening here, at least from an aesthetic standpoint in terms of the like demasking. So this is actually how it would look um, to see this generating the code snippets and all of its responses and things like that. So instead of the traditional left to right that we're used to seeing with like chat GPT and things of that sort. This is how it will actually be generating tokens right now. And unfortunately, that is one of the downsides of this is there is no aesthetic way to actually see this. It is what's going on under the hood, but unfortunately, we just kind of have to wait for that to complete and then the result will get shown. There could perhaps be a way for someone to implement something akin to this, but I just, uh, it was outside my scope for this evening, I suppose could be said. But it is interesting because it will generate things that are much later and then much like prior to that and it will also replace some of these as they have already been generated they can still get replaced so it is just kind of a neat thing to see happen all right so it basically said i can't do this go find a css tutorial and then learn how to do this which i mean <laughs> i don't really know what to make of that um it, it's technically correct i guess as there's only so much I can show here before it starts to get redundant, I think for the final thing, I want to just ask it to make a retro synthwave style Python game. Obviously something quite basic, but this isn't a model you're going to like pipe into RuCode and have assist you coding. I mean, you could if you were very eccentric, but you likely won't. So this is something that it may be able to do. I'm actually not going to say synthwave because I don't want to confuse it. I'll just say retro style game. That would be a rather large task to, all right, the model is exhibiting signs of laziness, which I suppose one could kind of empathize with. <laughs> all right, it just said, hey, use Pygame, I can guide you how to do it. <laughs> not necessarily what I expected, but um, again, I may not necessarily be using this with the right parameters or with the perfect implementation. So this video was more just to kind of spread awareness of this model as I find it technically very interesting. And I know a lot of other folks are interested in diffusion models like this as well. That's likely going to wrap this up. As this was more of a exploratory and experimental release, I just wanted to share it as I know a lot of folks would find this interesting. I will put this little chat script in github or on github as a github gist and i'll put that in the description in addition to that i do want to make note of the github repository for this model as it does succinctly mention a lot of what they were trying to do with the exploration and creation of this model Basically, in the motivation section, they talk about a few different questions that they sought to answer with this model. In addition to that, they do talk a little more about the specific GRPO methodology that they've come up with to train this. And beyond that, there is just kind of, I suppose you could think of it as suggested reading or further reading for how they actually went ahead and made a diffusion model out of the Quen 2.5 coder model. So there is actually some cool resource here in the github repository perhaps not so much in the hugging face model card so i will just put both of these in the description as well for those who want to look further into this with that that is going to wrap this up i wanted to share it it is really incredibly cool obviously it leaves some up to the imagination being that at least with my little script you have to just press like generate and then wait 200 seconds to see the result it would be cooler to see the actual diffusion process happening but Regardless, it's very neat. So that's going to wrap it. If you have any questions that are not specifically technically about this model, please feel free to leave them in the comments. And thanks for watching.